If you look in the SwiftUI preview in Xcode, you're gonna see the standard iOS picker. Now, it says cache right now, but the arrows mean you can tap on this thing to reveal other options like credit card or iodine points, whatever you need. It's a flexible way to choose items quickly. And it reads cache by default because that is the default selection. We made it cache as our default value of payment type. But when they move around and change cache to be credit card or similar, then the value has to become credit card or become iodine points. So this picker doesn't just read the value of payment type, it also writes the value back as the UI changes. This is what's called a two-way binding because any changes to the value of payment type updates the picker and any changes to picker updates the value of payment type. It goes both ways. This is where the dollar sign comes in. Because Swift's at state property wrapper use the dollar sign to provide two-way bindings to their data. So when we say dollar payment type like we do here, Swift you will write the value using the property wrapper, which in turn stash it away and cause the UI to be refreshed automatically. At first glance, almost certainly all these at symbols and dollar signs seem a bit unswifty, and it's true if you're coming from UI kit, you won't be used to working this way. However, they allow us to get a lot of features that would otherwise, otherwise require lots of hassle instead. Without things like using at state up here, we wouldn't be able to change values inside our structs because structs are fixed values. Without using at state object in our iDyne app here, we wouldn't be able to create classes that stay alive for the duration of our application. Without uh, environment object in the item detail, we wouldn't be able to receive shared data elsewhere in our program. Without the observable object protocol up here, we wouldn't be notified when external state changes. And of course, just now we had our um, order uh, view over here and check out without the dollar sign syntax, two-way bindings, we have to update all our values by hand to make sure they stay in sync. Anyway, that's our picker complete. And so we can go to our order view over here and update our code. So rather than just pointing to text of checkout, we can actually show uh, that whole view uh, in place. So we can say in the navigation link place order, change text checkout to be our checkout view and now try running it. Go ahead and choose a fresh break croissant, order this, go to order, choose place order, and you see that. <laughs> You're like, now what, cash, what does that even mean? Um, it's less than perfect, and that's, uh, let's put it that way. Um, and that's just despite putting in quite a bit of work to get this far, with one small change, to our checkout view, we can make this whole thing get better. What I want you to do is change this VStack from being a VStack to being a form. F-O-R-M, just like that. Boom, look at the difference. Now the label comes out. How do you want to pay? Followed by the picker saying cash and similar. So it changes the whole way our layout works. I'll add the carbonara, order, place order. We still have the nice menu popping up, credit card and similar, but now it correctly adapts to say, how do you want to pay next to it? So you know what that thing actually means. And it takes care of the layout. It just looks beautiful out of the box. This is the true power of SwiftUI's declarative approach to user interfaces. We say what behavior we want to have rather than try and get the precise styling like by hand. SwiftUI automatically adapts how this picker looks and works based on how it's being used. It's now being used inside a form where before it was a simple uh, V stack, which had it in the middle like that. The form adds the extra styling around it automatically. Okay, let's carry on with our form by adding two more components to it. One that lets users select that they have an iodine loyalty card and another lets them enter their card number. Both of these need to have those two-way bindings just like our picker. So we'll start out with some new local state. I'll say at state, private var, 
add loyalty details equals false. And at state private var loyalty number is an empty string. And now we can add controls to our form to represent those. Toggle is the equivalent of the old UI switch and text field is the equivalent of the old UI text field. So we want to add these two new things inside the current section. We'll say toggle add iodine loyalty card is on bound to dollar add loyalty details. And then a text field with a prompt of enter your iodine ID and the text bound to dollar loyalty number like that. Now there's not a lot of code in there, but it is worth mentioning some details. Both of these controls are bound to the new at state properties we just made. This toggle has some text inside that will automatically appear to the left as a description, add iodine loyalty card. And a text field has some text next to it that's used as a placeholder, which you type over as you enter into it. Now, before you run the app, there's one more change I want to make first. This text field, enter your iodine ID, should it always be there or only when the toggle above it is actually enabled? Now we bound this toggle switch to the value of add loyalty details, a Boolean. So which means when the user flicks on or off that toggle switch, the Boolean gets set to true or false. Wouldn't it be great if the text field was visible only when the toggle was on? But it turns out that's pretty easy to do. We can just go ahead and wrap this text field in a condition. If add loyalty details, then add the text field like that. Let's go ahead and give it a try. I'll press Command R. And I'll say, let's add uh, the Tower Burger perhaps. I'll press Order This. Then go to our Order screen and press Place Order. There's no ID, ID field there. I toggle it on. There we go. It pops in and out correctly, appropriately, based on the value of that toggle switch. And if you think it through, it should all make sense. This toggle has this two-way binding, dollar add loyalty details, and it binds that to that Boolean, true or false. That means when the Boolean is changed, the property updates. That property is marked with at state, which means we will re-invoke the body property when any state or environment object changes, re-invoke body. And that body then directly reads the value of add loyalty details and displays the text field. Now, for an improved effect, you can actually attach is on to dollar add loyalty details dot animation. And that will cause the loyalty card details to animate in or out appropriately. So I'll choose full English, then go to place order, toggle the switch, and in we go, appearing and disappearing more smoothly. Let's try another common control, segmented controls. In SwiftUI, this is actually another picker just with a modifier attached to make it a segmented control. So it works exactly in the same way. Give it a two-way bind to store a selection and then use a for each loop over an array to create options from a list. For this screen, we can add a segmented control to represent various tip percentages the user can select from. So. First things first, we'll add a new property to store the various options you want to show. I'll say tip amounts will be uh, 10, 15, 20, 25, and in case things have gone hideously wrong, zero. And also an at state private property to store tip amount. I'll make it 15 by default. We can now put all that into a segmented control in our form. And I'll put this in a new section. So this ends our first section how are you going to pay in loyalty stuff? Below that, I'll add a new section. I'll say the section here with a title of add a tip, question mark. And that'll be shown in bold text like that above our section, just like we had in the breakfast and mains in the first screen. Then we'll say as a picker, title will be percentage, with selection bound to dollar tip amount. Inside there, we'll do for each tip amounts, the ID of self and text showing 
uh, I'll do dollar zero percent. So it will show 15%, 25% and similar. But then critically, I don't want this pop-up menu here. I want to have them all visible at the same time. And that means adding a picker style modifier here of dot segmented. So we get a longer approach like that. So you can see all the values up front. Now, we're going to add one more component to our form, which is a button to actually confirm the order. We'll come back to its exact functionality in a moment because there are other things to look at first. But for now, we'll add this last section here. We'll do section, uh, title total will be hard code for now to be 100 bucks. Inside there, we'll say a button with confirm order. And there will do a little comment saying place the order. Now, yes, I know this total is clearly wrong. It's not always going to be 100 bucks, but just run the app for now. Give it a try. See what you think. We can go ahead and uh, uh, find, uh, let's do corn on the cob, <laughs> splash out, order this, go to the order tab, press place order. Notice we get this nice new button style, confirm order. This is a button like before, like here, but it understands it's inside a form, so it looks different. It's now aligned to the leading edge, has a blue color. It understands what's going on. You tap on this thing, it will flash gray as the whole row is being pressed when you activate it. Another example of how SwiftUI's form system changed the design and behavior of all the components we place inside it.